What happened to Jesse Ventura? Has he went completely off his rocker? Has he had a stroke? Has he went insane? What happened to Jesse Ventura, the former governor of Minnesota, former libertarian, host of the television show Conspiracy Theory? He's written, I think, two books on conspiracy theories. He didn't trust the government. He was a libertarian. He were he was a WWE WWF wrestler. He was an actor. He did all kinds of things in his life. And up until a few years ago, he was pretty decent as far as his political views go. I didn't agree with everything, but overall, you know, he had fairly decent views politically. But now it's obvious that he has completely went insane. What happened to Jesse Ventura? I mean, he was here, and somewhere along the line, he took a complete left turn as far as he could go to the left. In this video here on CNN, this interview he did with CNN, he endorses Kamala Harris for president. And his main reason for endorsing Kamala Harris is that he wants to see a woman president. No policy, no anything. Just he wants to see a woman president. He also has said in previous interviews that he wanted to ban, he was for ban on firearms. Complete left turn. He also said in this video that he pretty much he hates Donald Trump. He hates J.D. Vance. He is for Kamala Harris. He thinks that Men are solely responsible for women getting pregnant. He's for abortion. I mean, he has taken a complete turn. And you all know that personally, when I look at politicians, when I look at politics, if I see something I don't like, no matter if it is on the Republican side, if it's Donald Trump, if it's on the Democrat side, Harris, whoever, if it's Kennedy, whoever's running for office and Local elections, state elections, federal elections, if I don't like it, I will say it. And there are things I don't agree with when it comes to Donald Trump. However, if you take the two candidates, you take Harris and you take Donald Trump, Donald Trump is, in my opinion, the lesser of the two evils. We know what Harris stands for. And she is completely far left. Trump has opinions I don't like, opinions, opinions on the Second Amendment that I don't like, but so does Harris. And hers is just as bad or worse. So Trump is the lesser of two evils, in my opinion. So if you're going to vote, then go vote for Donald Trump. I mean, I wish there was better choices, but there actually isn't. But this guy, Jesse Ventura, has went crazy. Let's look at this video and see some of the things that he said in this video. It is shocking. To Iraq. Well, joining me now, former independent governor of Minnesota, Jesse Ventura. He endorsed Walls in his recent run for governor. Governor Ventura, thank you so much for joining me this evening. I'm really eager to hear your take on this because you are a former, former Navy SEAL. You served in Vietnam. And I have to ask you what you think of this attack from the Trump ban's ticket on Governor Walz's military service. Well, Laura, I'll tell you what I think. I think it's shameful. I think it's shameful that a veteran would attack another veteran. Uh, Governor Walz served honorably for 24 years in the National Guard. After 20 years, you are eligible to retire at any time you deem necessary. They talk about him missing his deployment. Pretty much, if you look at history, pretty much every war that we went into was based on lies, especially over the last 75 years, 80 years. They've all been based on false flags, false assumption, and lies to get the American people to back a war overseas that we didn't need to be in.
nothing with 9-11, and they ran out of bodies. They needed more bodies. They couldn't implement a draft. That would be political suicide. So what George Bush did was sign an executive order sending the National Guard into foreign deployment. The National Guard is not for foreign deployment. Their name says what they do. They guard our nation from within. I agree with what he's saying right there. It should be based in the United States of America. The National Guard should be, and it should be for their individual states, actually, in my opinion. So I do agree with that point he's making right there. So this hogwash about Governor Waltz missing a deployment, not only that, he's 24 years, he's an E-9. I deployed twice. We never even had an E-9 with us when we deployed. E-9s are not going to walk the point. They're not going to be involved in any combat whatsoever. They're figureheads being the most senior enlisted within their company, and that's what it's all about. So I think that uh, Vance is doing a disservice to himself and a disservice to the United States Marine Corps. I know a lot of great Marines, and Marines show respect, and Vance is not showing respect. And let's talk, let's continue. Who does he have respect for? Donald Trump, the biggest draft dodger from the Vietnam War, the rich white boy who bought his way out of it. I come from South Minneapolis. My friends and I didn't get out of it. We either got drafted or we enlisted. I know six or seven or eight of my friends. Donald Trump was your typical rich white boy who didn't have to serve in Vietnam because he could buy his way out of it. And that's who Vance is standing with, this guy who leads from the rear. Then why do you think, given all that you've described, from the politics, the history, and of course the person who's on the top of the ticket who has been criticized for the bone spurs reason for not going to serve. And I, frankly, I have not served. I am a civilian and have the ultimate reverence for those who have and thank you for our, your service. So why do you think this is the line of attack to choose politically? Obviously, it would offend and alienate voters on one level and also people who have served the armed forces on the other. I don't know. You'd have to ask Mr. Vance that. I don't understand his motive whatsoever how he could turn against a fellow veteran. You know And yet here, Jesse Ventura is doing essentially the same thing, isn't he? Think about it. Well there's there's kind of an unwritten rule amongst us veterans. You don't criticize another veteran. Not every veteran's a knuckle dragger. And I'm not going to define knuckle dragger because if you've been in the service, you'll know what a knuckle dragger is. But, you know, as a frogman in the United States Navy, my job was to ensure the Marines could get to shore to do their job. We went in ahead of them. We went in before them to ensure the Marines could land. And his point of being a Marine like he is and then criticizing the governor after 24 years of service, it's despicable on his behalf for doing that, and I hope all veterans feel like I do about it. You don't criticize another veteran and how they served, whether they're a cook. And here he is doing the exact same thing himself right here on CNN. Or whatever they do, they all have a job to do, and if you're going to be successful, everybody has to do their job and pitch in to be successful. So well said. I think it's, it's capturing the sentiment of so many people who are watching this. And there is the, the terms I can think of as kind of an ick factor of having people at each other in this way, knowing the nuance and knowing the fact that everyone has served. And what's the number? Like less than 1% of people have protected this nation over time. I do wonder, given your strong feelings and, um, and the way in which he has been attacked in this way and he is addressing it in various ways it won't be the end of the story i'm not a doctor i'm not an md i'm not a medical doctor but if you look at jesse ventura here we're doing this video it could just be nerves but he is definitely having a lot of twitches everywhere his face is twitching his arms are twitching so he could have parkinson's he could be on the early onset of parkinson's disease maybe I'm not saying he is. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but he has the symptoms from what I've read. You have endorsed traditionally third-party candidates, although you did endorse him for his run for governor. 
Do you intend to endorse the Harris Waltz ticket now? Well, I'll tell you this. I met with Bobby Kennedy last winter. We met for three hours. Mm -hmm. Apparently, I came, in, I came in second. He chose his woman, Shanahan, his running mate. Uh, Bobby's still a friend of mine, but I'll tell you where I stand right now. I'm going to be selfish. A few years ago, I got the opportunity to see the United States elect its first black president. I didn't think that could ever happen. And they even reelected him. Well, now I'm going to be selfish again. I've only got a few elections to go. I'm 73 years old now, so the window's closing. I want to be alive to see the first woman president of the United States of America and the first woman commander in chief, and we've got her right now. So he doesn't care about policy. He doesn't care about anything else, their record. He doesn't care about their st stance on the issues, how they voted in the past, what they've done, their history, their past, what they're going to do in the future. All he cares about is if they were black or if they were a woman or are a woman. Next, it will be a transgender president. I mean, they'll be voting for that reason. Got to have a black president. Got to have a woman president. Got to have a transgender president. It's not about ability to do a job. It's not about the record is not about the stance on the issues. Now it boils down to we got to elect a black president. We have to elect a woman president. We have to elect a transgender president. We have to elect an oriental president or first Muslim president. Oh, we already had that already. No issues whatsoever. It's based on race. It's this uh, diversity hire for the presidency, apparently. Stupid and crazy. And Jesse Ventura has obviously went insane. Governor, thank you so much for sharing your views on this issue. I think a lot of people have been very interested to hear what you have said. So you are officially endorsing the Harris Van Waltz ticket. Excuse me. Yes, I want to see a woman president. It's time for a woman president. We men have screwed it up enough. And you know what? Maybe we'll finally get some legitimate thing on the abortion issue. I would say he took the old Jeopardy Jeopardy and all those blood clocks is getting to his brain or something, more than likely. And here's where he talks about the abortion and blaming men. You can see this woman over here, this woman doing the interview for CNN, she's even thinking, what is this idiot talking about? I mean, really? Listen to this stupid shit. You know how to solve abortion? hold men responsible. They're the ones ultimately responsible for all abortions. If you hold men responsible, then you'll see a big change in the abortion rules. What does that mean to hold them responsible? They're responsible for every abortion that could take place. They are the aggressor. S sex mean so all the men, all the women that got pregnant didn't spread those legs, didn't pull those panties down themselves. They all got raped. Apparently, they didn't do anything wrong at all. The men was the aggressor, and the men just took it. So men is responsible for all the pregnancy. It's not the woman at all. He's taking responsibility completely away from the woman, when in reality, it is it takes two people. It takes two people to get pregnant, a man and a woman, a male and a female. To get pregnant, it takes two. It takes two to tango. And guess what? The man is responsible, and the woman is also responsible. They are both equally responsible, unless the woman did get raped. That's a possibility, but that very seldom happens as far as when it comes to pregnancy and abortion goes. It does happen, but the vast majority of abortions are carried out by women that got pregnant having consensual sex. And yes, the man is involved also. It is both parties. It is both people. However... The court will tell you that it's none of the man's business whatsoever what the woman does with that baby. If a man rejects to that woman having an abortion and doesn't want her to have an abortion, he has no say-so whatsoever in that issue. It's up to the woman to have that abortion, to go to a state that allows an abortion and get that, and get that done. They completely tossed the man out. The man, according to the courts, is responsible when the baby is born to give the woman child support, to give the woman support for that child. But he's saying that it's all 
the man's fault. How is it the man's fault and not the woman's fault also? It takes two people to have a baby. It takes a man and a woman. Not just two people. It takes a male and a female. So they're both responsible. But he's trying to take responsibility completely away from the woman and saying it's all the man. He's turning into a lunatic, obvious lunatic, man-hater. He, I don't know what happened to Jesse Burns here. I mean, it is wild how much he has changed and how he's turned into a complete idiot, in my opinion. Tells you that. You mean in terms of the, the exception there can't for rape? Be a, there can't be a baby without a man's involvement. That's what I'm telling you. So until you hold the men responsible for impregnating women, you're not going to get any type of legitimate type of law passed. you got to hold men responsible for the pregnancies of women because they are the ones responsible, not the woman, the man. It'll be interesting to see how people evaluate that. On the one hand, thinking about autonomy and agency over one's body and also the notion of... A I evaluate that as Jesse Ventura is an idiot. He's a freaking moron. Signing responsibility on the other. Well, I'd be curious to see how that, I, how that factors hey, out. L Laura, you know what else I stand for? What, Governor? I don't stand for a minimum wage. I stand for a maximum wage. Mm. If you can't live on a million dollars a month, something's wrong with you. <laughs> well, I'd like to sign you know, up for the no, million think dollar about a month it a moment. plan. 12, if you make $12 million a year, what would you want for? What would you possibly need? The point I'm making is there shouldn't be any billionaires, and I'll tell you mm. why. why. Because nobody works hard enough to get a billion dollars. And my hardest job I ever did was going through Navy SEAL training, and I was making $4 a day. Mm. And you're going to tell me a billionaire worked harder than I did? Bull crap. Is there anything more to say? Governor Jesse Ventura, nope. thank you so much for joining me this <laughs> evening. I've been eager to hear your opinion, and I'm glad I heard it tonight. Thank you. Who in the world would pay attention to that moron? I mean, that was some of the stupidest shit. Excuse my language, but that is just what it was. It was stupid shit. Crap. I'm like just about speechless, guys. How anybody could be that big of a moron in some of the things that he said? I mean, really? What do you think in the comments below? Do you think Jesse Ventura has lost his mind? Apparently he has. I mean, it should be obvious by now. And I think he's suffering from Parkinson's disease. I could be wrong. I'm not a doctor. I'm not diagnosing Jesse Ventura. I'm just saying the way he acts with the twitching he was doing all the time in his head, twitching and the way he was doing everything, it looks like the onset of Parkinson's disease, that, should be, that could be part of it. But he's been saying stuff like this for a few years now. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, he was all pushing for the this, the injection. So you know he's took eight or ten injections. That could be part of this too. But he has went completely off his rocker. I mean, really. What a moron. Comment. We'd love to know what you think about Jesse Ventura and his mental breakdown, apparently.